started when I went into the drop-in sessions that we had with officers of the council who were explaining how we would consult with everybody in this borough, not just the people who were IT side and were used to using their technology, but the people um, who quite clearly, and here again I'm, I'm agreeing with Councillor Norbury and I'll have to really go home and wash my mouth out, but then... <laughs>
perhaps take me into a consensus uh, this evening, Mr. Mayor, because I, I don't think there's a, a councillor in this chamber who actually wants to see any developments on our green belt. And I, I think there's no point in creating political argument between us uh, when we actually do agree on that fundamental. Um, but, but I'd like to pick up the point that my board colleague, Councillor Stuart Kelly, was making um, about, about the development of Brownfield. Because we all agree that Brownfield first is, is the right policy. But the, that does throw problems. The, the devil is always in the detail, isn't it? Uh, because of the, in the documents that we're studying, a phrase used two or three times about uh, creating a new Birkenhead Garden City, which sounds splendid, but at the same time we have phrases talking about greater density, greater intensification. Uh, and I think uh, as we move forward to the next phase of creating this plan, we do need to look very carefully at how we're creating that balance between creating uh, a, a garden city in Birkenhead while also making it uh, more densely populated. It's going to be a difficult thing to pull off, but to be a great success if we can. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I think um, what we have to remember is that the houses that we're going to be building, these houses over the next 15 years, are going to be here for the rest of the century. The vital thing is that those houses are well designed, that they are ecologically sustainable, that they are properly insulated, that the best technology is used to, to create things that are going to create the least impact on our environment. And I, I think, again, that's another aspect as we move forward, that those details we've got to look at are creating a housing stock which is going to be fit for the future. And, and not just built uh, uh, to maximise profit. So those are issues which I, I think we really need to bear in mind, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and as, as my colleague, uh, Dave Mitchell, said, uh, it's really up to the people to get behind this consultation. And so, so we can demonstrate to the inspector and to the government that the people of Wirral do not want to see our green health surrendered.
in my ward, we've mentioned by Councillor Mitchell, um, 50 houses, 220 houses have been built in Acre Lane, 50 on Rival Road, 40, then there's another 30, there's another 22, then there's those up that my other councillor colleague mentioned, and then there's a mixed way of green bottle that you want to build about 3,000 houses on. My question is, where are these kids going to go to school? Where's the doctor's surgeries? Where's the dentist? Our parents were struggling. I think our park, and what you're saying, has had the worst record for people waiting for it to be seen in our park ever. And yet we're talking about building nearly 12,000 homes. Mm -hmm. We're not on the infrastructure. So I would love to see the same amount of work, sorry Phil, done on the infrastructure plan as this has been done on a housing. Um, because I, I've gone through it, and I was there not as well as he has, but I can't see where it states where the revenue should. And I must take this opportunity because there will be a director sitting somewhere in here who will expect me to ask for the new school and we will say. Since the days of Laird, when the town of Birkenhead 
was built. It's an exciting vision which, along with the Willow Water, Waters, is now starting in earnest with the diggers, as I said, on the ground and those thousand homes being built uh, and we'll look at more. The huge, this huge regeneration is the biggest in the northwest, possibly in the country, and it's now setting us on an exciting path, is it not, to revitalise the borough. And Mr Mayor, to finish, it's one of those, it's, it's, it is vital to ensure that we deliver our local plan uh, through this regeneration that will help shape Wills the next 15 years. And I recommend the uh, recommendations to Mr Mayor. Regeneration approach. The government's own approach is brownfield first, 
so I feel sure their views and evidence would be welcomed. We have worked extremely hard to get the Government, Home England, MHCLG, the Combined Authority and their attention for work, and for them to look at the fantastic regeneration opportunities here, which they can clearly see for themselves. And this is now considered to be, as the leader said, the largest regeneration opportunity in the North West. Councillor are, are you finished? I've got... Mr. 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 if it assists, I'm happy to move an additional three minutes. The debate has been wide-ranging. We have a number of humble issues, which a lot of people who have contributed consciously to the debate will be keen for her to adjust and never mind. And three minutes, as the Cabinet Member said at the beginning, is just not there. And members of the public also were potentially waiting for... Okay, so I'll give you my question to that. Okay. Thank you. 
finished the, well, that's everything covered this evening. For I have finished the evening, a big thank you to the members of the public in the gallery. Thank you for sitting and listening so well. Thank you for your cooperation this evening. And, uh, you know, I hope it's been useful to be begged for you. And uh, I hope that people have taken it away. It won't be like that in July if there's green belts to be filled with Yeah. <laughs>